Start with what you have. God proves people before he approves them. In Luke chapter 16 and verse 10, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Yes, we all have fantastic dreams, visions, ideas. But to realize them, we must be ready to start with what we have, where we are. Yes, you have wonderful dreams. You have wonderful visions. But to realize those dreams and visions, you have to start with what you have, where you are. Many are stagnated and stranded in life, business and destiny because they want to start big. Start small, think big, and grow bigger. God believes in people who humble themselves to start small. In Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10, he said, who had despised the day of small things? Small things are often despised. What is starting small? Starting small simply means starting from where you are or with what you have. The problem with most people is that they feel they don't have what it takes to start. Wise man said, if you can think enough, mentor said, if you can think enough, what you have in your hands is enough for you to start with. Hear this truth? God will never allow you to get to the point where he has nothing with you to move you to the next level. There will always be a seed in your life to meet the need of your life. I said there will always be a seed in your life to meet the need of your life. All you need to do is to discover it. In 2 Kings chapter 4, 1 to 7, a woman was highly indebted and Elijah said to her, what hast thou in thy house? Initially she said nothing. <laughs> and later she remembered that she had something. And said, save a pot of oil. So I ask you, what is in your hands? Don't be afraid to start with what you have. Hear this truth? Nobody climbs the ladder from the top down. People climb the ladder from down up. Refusing to climb from down up, it means you want to die early. Because the only thing that starts from the top is the grave. Only grave, you start from top to down. Every other thing, you start from down to up. To say that, no, I don't believe in small starting, you are saying you want to die quick. Many are stranded because they don't want to start small. They want to start big. Nothing wrong dreaming big, but it's wrong when you're waiting to start big. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 15, he said, unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. So everyone has something to start with. May you start with what you have from today in the name of Jesus. Growth is a process, not an accidental occurrence. In Job chapter 8 and verse 7, Job chapter 8 and verse 7, 
It said, though thy beginning was small, yet thy later end shall greatly increase. Though you start small, God said your end must go up. May everything you start from today grow in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just the way you came and you have seen how God has moved us in 20 years. That's how the world will be surprised at your life the next few years from now. Amen. Two years from now, everyone will be amazed at the lifting hand of God over your life. Amen. The ladder, your amen, you have a testimony. Amen. He said, though your beginning may be small, don't despise it. Start from there. Because your end is short. You can start as a janitor. Very soon you'll be a jet owner. Ay, ay, ay. You can start. It's only in the kingdom of God where men can start as janitors. What you call garbage carrier. And yet tomorrow you can be a jet owner. It's only in the kingdom of God so it is happen. Your story shall be bigger than what I've shared now. <laughs> Louder, amen. You have a testimony. <laughs> Jesus did not despise five loaves and two fishes. He didn't say it was too small. He had to perform the miracle with only five loaves and two fishes to feed thousands of people. Despising what is in your hand is to stop the miracle of the future. In John chapter 6, start with what is available. Stop looking for what is not available. Starting small is a proof of faithfulness. If you look at the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, 21, he said, well done, that good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over few things. I make you ruler over many things. It is allowed to talk great, but start with what you have. Every business was once small. Every big business was once small. In the book of Mark chapter 4, 30 to 32, and he said, we are unto, shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like the grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater and all herbs and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Most great businesses today we are in small corners, but very soon that your business will become a <laughs> The Almighty God started the entire race with one Adam. Today, we have seven, over seven billion people. To say you will not start is to say you don't want to be great. Hear this truth? And hear me well, starting small does not connote that you don't have a dream. Starting small is not faithlessness. It is faithfulness. Borrowing to start is an evidence of lack of faith. Start with what you have and God will do the rest. So I hear. Don't stress your life by wearing an oversized coat. If you fold the hand, you may not be able to fold the back. Try to borrow to start something, you may put yourself under pressure. Obstacles to starting small. Obstacles to what? Why many people cannot start small? I'll tell you obstacles to starting small. This ministry started from one room. From what? From one room. We were living upstairs and the church was in the parlor. My wife and I, we had foam. Many people who have seen us today, they are wondering. We had our foam on the floor, pot on the floor, kitchen, the same room, the next room, about the other room, Pastor Charles and family, 
Downstairs, church. That's how we started. If we, the, you, I think you saw the canopy. One day rain fell. And our heavens opened. <laughs> the thing blew the canopy. Some we, we are holding the canopy so that rain will not fall. I say, be under an open heaven. Amen? If we say no, we will not start until we start like the cathedral. We would have died since. That was the dream, but we had to start somewhere. Don't despise the days of small beginnings. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at the picture here. Look at it. See where this was the canopy. This canopy. One day rain fell. See how I was looking that time. I think I was still 33 going to 34. So you look how I look. I used to have hair. Don't think I never had hair. Plenty of hair before. You find out where the hair has gone to. Amen. <laughs> We praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Obstacles to starting small. Number one obstacle is pride. Is what? Pride. Many would have started by saying, look at me at this my level. Which level are you? In James 4 verse 6, is when you give her more grace, wherefore he said, God is there the pride and give her grace to the humble. First Peter 5.5. 5. Pride is overestimation of self. Many would have said, bala, bala. I can't stand that way. Not me. You know where I come from. I can't stand that way. That's why five years now you have not started what God told you to start. Number two obstacle is despising the little. Despising what? The little, despising the little. If you look at Matthew 25, 24 to 25, Jesus gave a parable. The man with the one talent despised it. He said, What is this? This one talent. My friend, nonsense. The seed you are despising in that seed is a tree. In the tree is a forest of trees. And the planting of trees, there are many seeds. One orange seed you despise, in that seed is a full tree, and the tree is fruits of oranges, and on that you have plenty of them. So when you despise the seed and throw it away, you have either thrown away a forest, a plantation of orange trees. The man with the one talent looked at it and said, what nonsense is this? That's what I mean about, what is this five naira, five thousand, nonsense. What do you mean five thousand say? Nonsense. What am I going to do with 5,000? That's why nothing has happened. Number three, why many? Obstacle to starting small, not being realistic. Not being what? Not being realistic. Be truthful to yourself. Avoid self deceit. The prodigal son, the Bible said, came to himself. He came to what? Himself. And told himself, look, this is a prodigal life. There's no point deceiving myself. I knew that there's no way I would get money, so we started with what we have. I didn't say, well, um, I've been sleeping on bed, therefore, as we came to Paragon, I must sleep on bed. No way. I was realistic. We slept on foam. The chair was bent. I didn't use a full street to 2001. One day, a member came to our parlor and saw no chair. He said, Pastor, no chair. I said, make us to lie down in green pastures. I said, if you want chair, you buy. Don't bother me. Am I not anointed? What's your problem? The first chair we had was 2001. The man came with no chair. I said, sit here now, my friend. He said, am I not your pastor? We pray for you to be a millionaire. And he said, Papa, Papa. So the next day he came and brought tears. I was truthful. I was truthful to myself. There was no point giving myself stress. So I hear. God said, preach how you started. So I'm telling you the truth. 
All the balloon dreams you have without results can lead you to frustration. Start now. But tell yourself the truth. Okay. This is what I said. I'm going to start with 15 million. Where will you get the 50 million from? Be realistic. You have 5,000. Start with it. No, I, I, I have, a, have a proposal. My idea is to start with 1 billion. Naira. Where will the 1 billion come from? Where will it come from? Be realistic. You don't have 1 billion. So why are you posing? Don't pose so you won't decompose. I, I have a fantastic dream. Five years you have been having a fantastic dream. I did that not be fantastic. It's not cookistic. So be truthful to yourself. Be realistic to yourself. We didn't use microphone until our first anniversary. And the first anniversary, if you see the microphone, eh, it was a speaker that the member built. You know why he said, praise. You, went, <laughs> you have to wait for the speaker to release itself. <laughs> it was built by a member. We are realistic. Well, if you shout, your voice will be higher than the microphone. The speaker. So <laughs> when I say, praise the Lord, you, you have to come. Because the speaker will cease. Then when it goes back, it says, Amen. <laughs> but we are realistic. We are what? I, I never borrowed the member's car to drive since this church started. I was realistic because if I borrow a member's car to drive, tomorrow how will he call, like, call me? I did, I, I've never driven any member's car. As a principle. Because I, you can carry me in your car, but I will never borrow your car. I was realistic. I don't have a car. Carry me. If you don't have, I take my taxi. One day I entered Okada to come here. My wife and I traveled to Lagos. I think we go hold up around the room. So I said, my wife, you've been in the taxi. Let me go. So I stopped machine and I entered Okada. And they were waiting for me at the junction. I passed them. <laughs> they knew I was coming from airport. So they were waiting for me. I was in Okada. I got here. They said, oh, I don't enter Toto. So I was here. They didn't know when I passed to Okada. He didn't move my status as a pastor. That you enter machine doesn't make, change you from a pastor. Be realistic. Be what? I'm seeing myself to today. I've never been, I've never lived a fake life. This is me. God said, preach what you know you are past. Start small. Number four. Procrastination. Pro what? Procrastination. It is putting off impending tasks to a later time. That's the meaning. It is putting off impending tasks to a later time. Many of us would have started but tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is the yesterday of today. Yesterday, he said tomorrow is already today. Next one. So, in John chapter 9, verse 4, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. He said, walk now while it is time. What does do I do quickly? You have been saying for three years, you go to school, go now. But, but I want to go into international business. Passport, you have no. Have you got the visa? No. But one day, I will fly from globe to globe without passport. <laughs> Amen. Stop saying tomorrow, do it. Whatever you want to do, do it now. If it is school, attend it now. If it is business, start it now. Stop looking for what you don't have. Use what you have. So I hear. He said, that and that to us, do it what? Quickly. Shout hallelujah. Number five obstacle to starting small is comparison. Is what? 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12. It says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. You are who you are. Don't try to be like somebody else. Don't compare yourself with anybody. The reason many of us have not even wedded is because we are trying to do our wedding like somebody else. Are you hearing me now? Start your business. Don't copy. If a man is using a watch of one million naira, your own is one hundred naira. Watch is watch. The time is the time. If you have the money, buy. If you don't have the money, don't go and kill yourself. You see the kind of shoe you wore, silk man. 
Now must buy that shoe. <laughs> Before you, hypertension is simply hyper plus tension. Hyper plus. And because of the things we are giving ourselves, the tension we are giving ourselves, that's why many people are going over hyper. Hyper is simply hyper. Compound word. Hyper together is hypertension. When you allow your life to have what? When you go hyper and then there'll be tension. Just be yourself. Be your be yourself. Don't compare yourself with anybody. I've never bothered about what anybody is doing. I've never asked anything when anybody is preaching. We are talking of what God is building, but I've never seen anybody's structure say, I want to be like this structure. I don't worry about myself. I don't know how much any suit costs. I used to wear a coat. There are different between suit and coat. You know coat? Suit is different. Suit is different from coat. <laughs> when we started one day, I had one brown suit. That I can tell the picture of the suit. You know, there's a way you wear a particular thing. You know how the thing look like. It's over 17 years, but I can tell you how the suit look like. So one day I wore the suit to a point, the suit got tired. So I took it to wash a man, not laundry. And after they finished the suit, the hand was like this. <laughs> this one was like this, this one was like this. <laughs> so I looked at the suit and said, how do I wear this suit to church? <laughs> one was short, one was long. I said, ah, they clean it at all, I said, yeah. So I said, come, if I wear this, the church will be confused. So, I, Pastor Ajidike said, Papa, give me, let me wear. <laughs> so, as Ajidike, when he get to church, when they say, praise the Lord, make sure your hand is up. <laughs> so that no member will be confused. They will, so that they won't know that the thing is short and long. I say, if you don't keep your hands like this, make sure you'll be doing like this. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I didn't compare myself with any but It was coat. I used to wear coat. My wife and I have gone to buy 2,000 another coat at the kitchen. I will be in the shop. She'll be outside. I said, look well. Let nobody see us. So. <laughs> <laughs> she has been my best friend from that time. She'll just stand there. I said, my husband, oh yeah, price quick, price quick, let's go. <laughs> Amen. Don't worry your life, my friend. Are you going to sit down? Don't compare yourself with any, but today with all humility, I give out suits like you give out uh, sweets. So don't compare yourself with anybody. Start from where you uh, shout hallelujah. Benefits of starting small. Benefits of starting small. What are the benefits? Number one, you develop strength. You develop what? If you look at Adam, Adam did not start small. Adam started as a full-fledged mustard man. That's why he failed. He came as a full-fledged man. He did not grow, so he failed. Jesus started and grew. He said, and the child grew. Luke 2.40. And was strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and grace of God was upon him. He grew. So he developed strength. He developed what? Because he grew. He didn't come in like Adam. He grew. David grew from killing the bear, the lion, and later Goliath. When you start small, you develop what? Strength. Number two, benefit of starting small is that it eliminates wastage. Eliminates what? Wastage. Jesus, because he started with five loaves and two fishes, he said, gather the fragments, John chapter 6. He didn't waste them because of how he started. He never started small. Never started. Have you experienced that people you hand over business to who didn't start small, they are the highest wasters. Just hand over a business to a man who did not start from scratch. He will destroy the business. Because he did not grow. 
So to him, that is how life should be. You tell him he will buy a car when he's supposed to be using a machine. He will buy a jet when he's supposed to be using a car. The, the highest wasters are people who never started small. It eliminates what? Waste. John 6, verse 12. Number three benefit, you overcome challenges easily. You overcome challenges easily. If you watch me and watch this church, because we started from one level to another, challenges are not moving us through. Huh? God told me after Daniel was accused falsely, he moved to a new level. After Joseph was accused falsely, he moved to a new level. After Jesus was accused falsely, he moved to a new level. So, false accusation is another level. Are you hearing me now? But if I've never faced challenges, it can weigh you down. It makes you, you don't panic. You know what? Panic. You overcome challenges easily because you have gone from one level to another side here. You overcome what? Challenges easily. Number four, you gain experience. You gain what? Experience. You gain experience. You can, that, because you have grown, experience is there. Because you can handle one level to another. You gain experience. Check men who say small. They can tell you they are a wealth of experience. They say, no, I started with one block, from one block to two blocks, from two blocks to thousands of blocks, from blocks to blocks. But the man who has no experience, he didn't start small. So I hear. Let me close on this note. Many know how to start small, but they don't know how to make the small become big. That's where I want to close. Many can start small, but they find it difficult to move the small to big. We started small, but we are no longer small. That's where I want to close. How can you start small and take the small to big? Many can start small, but they are still small. After 20 years, if you had come back after 20 years, and still see you on plot 35. That would be a disgrace. True? So I from plot 35. My wife and I one day came to church. I will never forget that day. I finished service in less than 12 minutes. Preaching, opening prayer, praise and worship, everything, 12 minutes, time was over. We came like this, only my wife was the adult. All the rest were children. When I said, praise the Lord, she would say, amen. I said, my wife, if it's like this, how many years will we stay on earth? I finished everything in 12 minutes, service was over. Now, I can imagine if we are still at that level till now. Won't you call us? Will you come here? How can you carry the small to big? Apply the principle of John 3.16. Apply the principle of John 3.16. I'm not going to teach the same thing you think I taught. You say, yes, I know it already. It's a lie. What is the principle of John 3.16? For God, shall we go together? Let's read together. For God, that he gave, that whosoever should not, but have. This is how you start the small to, become, to make it big. Number one, God so loved the world from the beginning of your small starting, have a global dream. Let your dream be the globe. Let your dream be the globe. For God so loved the world. He came with one son, Jesus, but his dream was the entire globe. You are starting from one room, but let your dream be the globe. Ted Turner, the founder of CNN, started from one room, but his dream was the globe. The founder of CNN, his name is called Ted Turner. Ted Turner started from one room, one small room. But CNN today is the entire globe. While 
You are starting from one small point. Let the globe be your dream. God started with one Jesus, but for God so loved the world, he didn't love only Israel. He, Jesus was born in Israel, but his dream was the entire globe. So when you are starting small, from the beginning, dream the globe. We started with NTA, Port Harcourt, but my vision was the globe. Today, I'm talking to people around the entire globe. Nothing wrong starting small, but dream the globe from the beginning. Number two, when you dream the globe, he said, whosoever believeth, there is nothing in this kingdom that can walk without faith. Whosoever believeth. So you must have faith. You must have what? Faith that the small can become great. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe. Must what? That is a reward of them who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Your faith decides your future. Faith comes by knowledge of the word. Is that true? Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. So number three, now that you have faith, don't just have faith. Go for knowledge to increase your capacity. Go for what? Knowledge to increase your capacity. Jesus came, but he grew in wisdom. He didn't say, I'm the son of God and remain. He grew his capacity. For you to take the small to big, grow your capacity. Grow your what? There's a principle called the love lead. Look at me here. The love lead of present on this principle. Look at me. Every executive, whether church, business, family, any institution, this is you. The head. This is the organization. The organization will grow to meet you. Anywhere you stop, that's where growth stops. I come again. Whether president of a nation, head of a parasatal, head of ministry, this is you and this is the organization. Every organization grows to meet you. The day you stop growing at the head, the organization will stop growing. No organization grows beyond the man at the top. If I stop growing, this church will stop growing. If there's no growth in your family, the head of the family is no longer growing. If a nation is not growing, the head of that nation is not growing. If the church is not growing, the pastor is not growing. If your business is not growing, you are no longer growing. So you grow. He said, this family is not growing. The head of the family is no longer growing. So you increase in knowledge. Increase in what? You can only take. The man said, I have five talents, but I've multiplied five other talents. That means he increased his capacity. Many of us are praying, but we have not increased our capacity. Character without capacity will still limit you. Many have character, they are holy, but no capacity. No sin, but no capacity. You must live a righteous life, you must also have capacity. So I hear. Number four. It says, shall not perish. Shall not what? Shall not perish. That word, is said, where there's no vision, the people perish. Proverbs 29 verse 18. In order not to be stripped of honor and dignity, you have to be prayerful. No small thing can become great if you are not prayerful. If you are not what? Because they say, I, I said before you are an open door, but there are many adversaries. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9. So to clear away the adversaries, for you to advance, you must pray. You must what? Because forces of darkness will contend with you as a child of God. So you must be prayerful. You must be what? Prayerful. You must be prayerful. Number five. For God so loved the world, he gave. What did he do? He gave. What did he do? 
He gave. He gave. He gave. So if your small business will be great, you must pay your tithe correctly and give offering properly. You must be a giver. If you are not a giver, you'll be limited in your growth. God did not just wish. He gave. Every man that would take small to big must be a giver. Must be a... For God so loved the world, he gave. His best. He gave what? If you give trash, you can't get treasures. You can't give trash and expect treasures from God. It's not possible. If you want treasures, then you must give treasures. God so loved the world, he never gave in Michael. He gave his best. Businessmen hear this? The reason most businessmen have not been able to take small to big is because they give trash. They give what? Yeah, they're expecting treasure. Shout hallelujah. When we are small, I'll share this testimony because I'm about rounding off. Many times, even churches say, look, we are small ministries. Nobody's trying to help us. We are very small ministries. Nobody, all the big ministries cannot help us. We never went to any big ministry for help. We sold it to the big one and the big one took us up. You don't go to big places to help for help. You sow to the big ones for their grace to answer to you. Number six, pay the price. Pay what? The price. Pay the price. The quality of the price you are willing to pay determines the quality of your life. Exodus chapter 9 verse 10. Finally, for God so loved the world, it's not possible to ever succeed if you don't have love of God. For God so loved the world, it was love that moved him to give. So the foundation of anything you are doing is to love God and love what you are doing. Love God and love what you are what? If you don't love God and you don't love what you are doing, you won't succeed. Love God, number one, and love what you are. Anything you don't love, if you don't love teaching, you will never be a great teacher. Are you blessed tonight? Well, this is the story for 20 years. And you will have everlasting life. Everlasting what? That is salvation. No matter how you do, if you like, get the whole world. And if you lose your soul, you have lost all. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? So after all said and done, make sure you have heaven as your focus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So the ultimate is that you don't miss heaven. Rest your feet.